Okay. All right. Um, welcome everybody to Six Scale. Um, I'll mention this just like I did last week, um, um, in case anyone who wasn't here. We're, we moved to um, <clears throat> weekly meetings. Uh, so the cadence now instead of bi-monthly, we'll be doing it every every Thursday at this time. Okay. Um, so just kick things off with uh, with the agenda. Um, uh, Marcel, this is your PR. Uh, do you want to give an update on how things are going with that? Yeah, so uh, we have a, I would say, a large discussion about that. Uh, I simplified the PR uh, more mostly, but it's, of course, it's not super simple. Um, and as Roma <laughs> mentioned, uh, but the PR, it's now, I removed all the part that's collecting metrics from Prometheus uh, and reporting and, and verifying that. And also the PR, I had some uh, configurations coming from, uh, for example, the, the task would be, a conf instead of being hard coded, was in a YAML, I removed that also. It's, it's kind of, the task would be hard coded now, just to have less things. Uh, and I update the part, uh, as you mentioned, it was actually a very good uh, recommendation that, I was checking the status of the VMs for the updates and for deletion, uh, doing the uh, doing the get operation. And when I was running, for example, a simple test creating five hundred VMs, I was getting a lot of this throttling message from the the the. Kubernetes client, and and then it was not good it? because it was introducing delays in the experiment and everything. And uh, I changed it to the other way to watch actually. So it's uh, now watching the VMs for both uh, the change for for the change and for deletion. Um, for the chains, I'm just getting the timestamps from the VM phase and get the running time of the VM. For deletion, it's a little bit needs a more, uh, still needs some, uh, some information from that, which means just delete the no, uh, an object in Kubernetes doesn't mean that it's gone, isn't it? So we need to check if it disappears, the VM disappears in the, in the, in the cluster. So that's why I have, well, there are two calls, uh, a separate one for to check when it's deleted. Um, that's pretty much. So regarding the latency that I'm testing, so Roman also mentioned he, he was expecting the beginning uh, test that was just creating and not testing the, the, the performance, the latencies. Uh, for now, uh, well, I already have it implemented, I would say, and I think it's it's good to have the test. Um, you know, if we make sure that if some PR or something happens, it will fail. You know, the the the, the verification. By the way, how, how I'm measuring the perform the the latency. Okay, so what I'm doing is I run the test. I run the test. Actually, I run 15 times. Um, it would be better to run more, but I run 15 times. And I take the, the, the times, the highest times that the VM get created. And I define like 1.5, you know, uh, uh, higher latency than this one. Just to make sure that we are not, we are defined some, you know, um, some range and like 50%, you know, higher than the latency it's defined now, and, you know, to, to be okay in the system. Uh, I don't want, I didn't define like a very tight, you know, what the, the, the latency that I'm collecting from the system. 
uh, just to avoid to introduce a test that <laughs> maybe you start to fail, you know, many times and just to, to have a comfort zone now for now, then we can, we can recheck that later. And so you have like, um, do you, so you, so you actually have something that fails. Like you have a, um, this, this is like, what's the, so like you have something that you have a threshold right now is what you're saying. Yes, exactly. Okay. Do we, well, I guess, um, uh, well, I, that's worth talking about because I, I, I like, I'm wondering, um, like, as we, I, like, I have it here, like baseline and we, we talked about like thresholds and other stuff. Like, I, I mean, is that, um, do we want to do this here? Like, do we want to, or like, is like, do we want to, I, this wasn't clear to me from last thing. Do we want to do like actually have a defined threshold that we fail on or do we just want to like report stuff here with this? What did we say last time? And I guess I can check the notes. Right, the, the proposal of this test was to actually have thresholds and fail. And this is part of the first implementation also that I did. And I think this is valuable anyway, you know, because it's, if we don't check that after, you know, months of that, no one will care about that anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think we, we did, right? We said... Yeah, we, we wanted a baseline. Okay, yeah, we yeah. said we were gonna do that. Okay, I see. So whatever the number you decide, what what is the number you came up with? Like, what's the um, the latency that you have? Yeah, it's in, it's in, if if you go to the PR, you can just just check that. Is it uh is it in a comment or do I have to like? If you go to the file, yeah, it's the dense test. It should be dot dot go yeah yeah go just a little bit After, this is yeah so you can see here so this is the configuration of the so the task yeah. i'm creating oh there is a comment here sorry i need to remove that from the chart uh it's uh one was the test you did yes i also yeah. did the 500 but i don't don't want to include that in the pr right now I just want to include okay. this. Yeah, this, so this, this is, is your user thresholds. Yes. Okay. And this is seconds or this, what is it's it? It's seconds, yeah. And also for the the batch, you know, the batch uh, startup limit. For example, to create, you know, 100 VM should be under 300 uh, seconds. Because it's also changed, you know, the even those. The, the, the response from the, the the system to actually accept a new VM to be created, it will not be um, uh, verified if we just check individual VMs uh, latency. It needs to also check the batch. And this is like, um, this is to running, like this is when we first see the, the VM I running? Yes. It's the it's the the time between the object being created to the running phase. Okay. So I get the timestamp of the object uh, be created, VMI object, and the running phase. Okay. Cool. Okay. Good. All right. So we get some sort of baseline. Then that makes sense. So we fail. Uh, what's your failure? Like, what do you say is a failure if you are? Outside these um, higher than that, yeah. And any on these, okay. And uh, those okay. tests will be actually be running in the environment that I'm running, so that's why I'm I, you know, I trust this uh, latencies now. So. Okay. Okay. Cool. This is neat. Um, do we want to um, uh, like Roman? I saw you had a comment here. Do you want to talk about this? Like we um. What do you think? Um, well, um, yeah, as I said, uh, as I discussed with Marcello a second, also out of band, um, I was really hoping to just have uh, to just keep any collection right out com right now completely out. So, so we would just, I mean, we, we collect all kind of stuff in with Prometheus, and we would catch it in our dashboard. And I just wanted to have a very a few very basic scenarios which just run and are not even concerned about. 
collecting the metrics and interpreting them right now. And then in a second step, think about a framework. So that's why I'm a little bit hesitant to this PR at the moment. But I. It's not really a framework. So it's. it's yeah, yeah, I just didn't want to have any interpretation in there. Just the simplest possible way without thinking about how to get insights on this part. Just as, a, as you see here on my comment, just creating the VMs, waiting until they're running, test done, basically. Right. Is it because of this, like what I just had? Um, uh, why, why, I don't know what that was, but the, the um, like where I just was with the density.go, like because it has like a, it's configurable. Is that what your concern is? Like, I don't know why. I, well, there, there are still the, things in the uh, different start functions like uh, consistent start VM function or Poisson density function, whatever. I just, Right, I can raise uh, they, they, they can all make sense. It's just really I wanted it to have that simple without any interpretations right now, just to see what's happening in CI and then and then later on doing the all the other sort of part. That's all that's my main thing. I, I'm not even trying to uh how, how is it called to to say uh, it, it's not at all about if I like or don't like what's implemented there regarding to the rate limit functions and so on. It's really more like I didn't expect it to see expect to see right now. Right? You know what I mean, Marcello? <laughs> and also the configure all these tons of configurations options. I just expected one VM template, VMI template, which is the smallest one possible where we know that the VM will crash or, or not, yeah, but still key, stay in running state, right? And all the rest later, that was, so that we can easily see things. So we get the collection metrics collection fast. We will probably then see immediately on the collected metrics that we run in the quality, uh, in the query per second limit of our client and stuff like this. And that's, you know, that's what I wanted to have initially. And then think about all the other stuff, like what, what would be our values for, for failing the test, uh, what would be acceptable for us? Uh, how would we want to express it in code? Yeah. So Roman. it's more probably more a question of the iterations, iterative approach which we take. David? Yeah, so um, how would you approach the metrics collection then? Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe your thoughts there. So, so right Indeed. now, I would just, uh, me or Marcello? You. You. Yeah, right now, it's collected in CI then, or when you run it with Prometheus locally, you can look at all the the, the metrics which are assigned to it. And that's it, basically. OK. So what you're saying is we would have a density test that's just going to execute uh, creation of a bunch of VMIs. Uh, make sure they go to a running state and then I guess delete them. And then externally we'll have uh, monitoring some sort of uh, report um, given yeah. to us by Prometheus or whatever that would give us an indication of how how this did. Yeah, for the beginning. Um, and then right, I, I so mean, what, we what? Can, I, I'm not so, we can also take what you have here, uh, keep what you have here for the reporting. Mm -hmm. Why not? It's just like, it's especially for the beginning, not without looking at Prometheus anyway, not very helpful. Just right, so it's, uh, I understand that. Uh, I don't, I just think in that, what do you, this baseline idea, view, that you want to have, uh, it's, that doesn't really need to be actually in the CI CD, because for example, I, I already have access to the nodes that are going to run in it. Actually, I'm doing, uh, today I, <laughs> I just mentioned to you the, the about the metrics again that I forgot that they don't complete the premises. But anyway, so um, that I'm going to report, you know, those informations. So I, I want to do actually a large test. Like uh, I, I didn't. I was planning to do that today, but I didn't finish. Like 100, 500, something that they, they actually Nvidia guys did and expose a Grafana dashboard 
uh, I'm creating a Grafana dashboard with the metric that we've been discussing here in the SIG, uh, you know, in our meetings. And then we can see that well, even though uh, we don't, it's not integrated to CICD yet. We can already see that. Um, but with the test, we can make sure that uh, then the, for the, the idea that we were seeing about this continual evaluation of the counterplane, uh, we, are, we do a, just the, the first step of, uh, we make sure that things will fail if someone introduced something that is very nasty, you know, and increase the, you know, decrease the performance too high. Yeah, like, so I guess I, we're like, I, we, yeah, we, I'm not talking about uh, just having the test and starting collecting the metrics and then for months this will be, I was just expecting a set of PRs very fast. Where we, I, I'm not, I think that of course makes sense in general. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, still like, not convinced that we have, oh, sorry, go ahead, Ryan. I don't want to, you were just trying to talk. No, I, was, I, I, we might be all saying the same thing. Like the, 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 the like, I, I have this as like stage one because we talked about it. We've been talking about it for a few weeks now um, where we, we have this initial um, CI job and, and, you know, having um, something like that actually fails, like having it measure something and have it fail like if we have that now, like I'm almost like, okay, that's that's fine. I guess maybe what we're saying is like, we just, we stop it at, at that. Like we just, we look at something that we have that we can have as like experimentally that we run in CI just for a period of time while we work on these, right? That's like what we're saying. We just, we just, uh, it may have some framework stuff but maybe we just kind of, and that may be okay. We just kind of come back to it. Like we, we part of these, the two and step two and three is that we kind of, we, we work some, maybe some of the framework stuff that's in here or the stuff that's generating load because it already has to, right? We just kind of rework it. This is just kind of like our initial, you know, script to get things kicked off. And it's like how I'm looking at it. Is that, would that be okay with everyone? Is that like, even with this, these thresholds and you know, other stuff, like we just don't take it any farther than that. We just leave it at that until we finish this. David, you wanted to say something too? Yeah, I was just trying to sort that out as well. <laughs> so uh, I want to see uh, the decouple. I mean, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, the decoupling of the load generator and the report uh, generation, uh, which would allow us to do things like create a density test in our CI framework, use the a common reporter tool or whatever to, to get the results, but also um, give us the, the power of using the same reporting tool with things outside of our CI. So create load tests uh, that don't have to be generated from our functional tests and still get reports uh, that are consistent. Um, yeah, so that I think that's my main concern is if we start momentum in one direction. So if we, if we merge this the way it is right now, then we, we've created uh, a direction and reversing a direction is a lot harder than continuing with the same direction. So if we're not comfortable that this is a good long-term uh, or where we want to be headed, then why don't we just, in a very small way, like the smallest way possible, create the things that are headed in the direction that we'd like to see long-term. Right, so I have some comments about that. So yeah, in the beginning of the PR, I would say that it, it had a lot of things on it. And actually the report generation, I kind of, you know, well, it's just still printing, printing things on this, you know, SDDA uh, out. However, it's not generating a report anymore. I removed that part. So it's, I would say that, you know, uh, well, let's organize thing, my, sorry, my thoughts here. I would say that we have two, two main areas, okay? One thing is to monitor the control plane, you know, uh, for the, in the CI CD system and, and make sure that things don't get, you know, too bad. And another thing is to deep dive in the performance. So 
to do like a, a very, you know, detailed performance evaluation and deep dive on that, actually, I think it was a good idea that you mentioned. Maybe extend Kubber. I actually uh, tried to see the code and I don't think it will be too hard to extend that. And Kubern generates this nice report. We can, you know, put there all the metrics that we are thinking, and then we run offline in a, you know, in a cluster that we want, and we deep dive the performance of Kubern. And the other, the other direction, it's what I was mentioning. It's to have the, you know, integrated in the CI/CD system. This idea. So I, I think I, I don't, I don't know if you guys saw. I sent a, a document, you know, with the plan of that before. So, uh, and we have like uh, three kinds of, of types of, uh, of jobs, you know, that I was saying the small scale to 100 VMs that runs for HPR, a medium scale that runs daily and a large scale that uh, in, in Red Hat, uh, we have this uh, possibility to access a, a large a cluster that I want to run that before each release. And we can keep that, you know, and- Yeah, Marcelo, and, that, that makes sense. Uh, like, like that makes sense to me, like, sorry to interrupt you. Like that, that makes sense. Yeah, like sure. we, I think we're aligned on, on this. Like, I think we're aligned on like, or the idea of this, having a CI uh -huh. job. I think maybe where we're not aligned is, um, is exactly how we get here. Because like, we're, we're, we're sort of like, we have we have these two steps where we're talking about how like we want to have a tool generate load and how to how to generate a report that will take us to a ci job that all the things you mentioned um but i think like i think we're we need to figure out is like because we i think we like this first step like having something there I, I just can we break this down like what is it that what is what do we consider to be like an acceptable thing for this pr because like that's like that's maybe where at least i'm struggling to like you know, we have a bunch of things in this PR, like we have some thresholds, you know, what is it that we want it to do? What would we consider to be a step forward that's not, you know, inhibiting anything in the future? Like, can we name these things? And then, and then I think then this will unblock this and we can move forward and start with the design on, on these. Yeah, so as far as understood what uh, Roman uh, mentioned, what it's concerned is to have the threshold. Okay, so we, I don't know. I, I, I just so what I meant is what I see there. There are just a lot of things right now, like configuration options for the tests, uh, how you do the the creation of the VMs, with which I think you can right now for the scope for the initial test. It's really just one test right now where you start a different number of VMs. You mean the Poisson process? Yeah, yeah. You can. I mean, you're not using it as far as you see. It's just still in the PR, but you have all the configuration options. 10 or 15, how you can configure the tests. I, I would, all I think is, let's just throw all this out right now. You can do this, a, a similar thing with, I don't know, 40 or 50 lines of code. And just in a follow-up PR, PR, think about how you want to report it for creating thresholds and all. And in the meantime, we just collect in the CI shop where we've prepared everything with Prometheus just the data right now. That's that's basically all I meant. I, I think all you said and what Ryan said and David said, I think it, on this division, we all agree. It's just this first initial thing where we, where I personally am hung up a little bit at the moment. You know what I mean? Right, so, well, yeah, I partially agree. So like, uh, I, I don't think like, uh, you know, drop the structure, you know, to define, you know, uh, information from the test, it's it's good idea. I, I, I like the idea to have it structured and then we see what the test should have. Uh, I think many of the, the functional tests has it in the kubevert, you know, and it's easier to read that later, you know, when it's get bigger, especially. Um, I but, think the concern, uh, Marcelo, remove if we go the... too far, if uh -huh. we go too far, yeah. like, sorry again, like if we go too far, like we're, we're going to continue on, like we're committing to a path, like what David said, like we, like we, we're going down a path. And, and so I guess like part of what we're saying is that let's do the simplest thing that can get some value that we can just pull out later and replace with this and, and like, you know, hundred lines of bash could do it. Right. And that's like, and that's, that could let's, provide yeah, value. Let's say go instead of bash, but yes. All right. A hundred <laughs> lines of go. 
uh, maybe it's called by a bash script, whatever. It, and all it does is like it, it creates 100 VMs. It, you don't need any configuration. You can set the threshold to fail. We have those hard coded values. Like we could, that's all we need. We, so, it, and, and that's it. Like we just, that gives us like, we, and we, we have like some sort of, um, we don't do any reporting. We just kind of gather and, and we just, uh, we say pass fail. That's it. And, and just defer the rest to the next PR or just, the, yeah, that's all. Yeah. And that can go very yeah. fast still. I mean, it can be, can be that we would merge this very simple test today and two days later or one or two weeks later, we already have something good, which we can merge afterwards, which would do already more because we had the time to think about it. And you know what I mean? Does that make sense, Marcel? Like we just want to simplify it um, as much as possible. So we're not compromising any like because when, when we direction. yeah yeah because when we think about the struct which you have to configure i think that you have you have to already some configuration variables where i'm not sure if thinking about these making these configurable if this is valuable at all for the tests or not be because you're potent potentially testing scenarios where i'm not necessarily agreeing if it makes sense to even test them and by just moving that all out and just reducing it to the to what we want to test right now we can bypass all these discussions for now and already start gathering, producing value, right? Right. Yeah. So like for the configurations, so if maybe you can point, you know, for example, the arrival rate that thinks that you, you think that's maybe it's too fancy now for the test. If you can point that, I can, I can yeah, definitely remove those parts from the test and and uh, then we can move forward from that, yeah. Okay. Okay, we can comment on the PR. Um, okay. Then, okay. Okay, that's, I think that covers this one um, then. So the, um, we can, so I, so I, that, that should get this kicked off. And then um, we need to do some design here. Um, on, on these, I'm thinking, um, I, we've already heard some ideas about, about this, but we can have sort of design. I, I don't know if we're gonna have time to talk about it today. And, um, but if there's any, if anyone wants to take on like writing about any, either any of these things, like how it'll look, requirements, um, goals or anything like that. Um, and you wanna throw it in issue, Google Doc, anything, um, whatever, or if you wanna just, Add a bunch of bullet points here. That's that's fine. We can uh, we can look at taking this on next week. Like we can maybe look at taking the first one on and trying to build some a uh, bunch of different ideas around it. But if anyone wants to take it on, feel free. Okay, um, we'll move on to the next point. Um, I I talked about this last time as something I said I was going to do um, with with baseline, um, and there's a um, uh, Roma, you actually just did this uh, patch. We talked, so last time we talked about um, in Reconcile, um, one of the things that we saw with the, uh, from, from our testing internally was that we're being rate limited. Uh, so Rowan put together a patch to uh, measure this um, so we can see it. Um, I haven't got a chance to use it. I, I have to pull it in and use it and uh, I'll come back with some baselines for you. I, I can do it in the middle of the week. Um, middle next week on, on Kubernetes Dev or something to give you some ideas. But it kind of got me thinking like, um, you know, baseline, how how we will define baselines um, for things. You know, it wasn't really clear to me because, you know, one thing I was thinking of like, um, you know, what are the rules here? Like I, I could say like, you know, my cluster is this big, has this many VMs, you know, how am I doing this? You know, how, how am I going to find this baseline? It, it like, I, we have these tools that we are thinking of, of um, generating load. I'm sa it sounds like to me, like eventually what we'll do is we take these tools and we use them to generate our baseline for different things. And we sort of categorize them um, like based on load and, and stuff like that. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Um, so if we do, um, so any sort of baseline that we generate that's sort of you know ahead of time, we can kind of use this like a, just a temporary placeholder. Um, so what I'm thinking would do is like, I'll create a, like maybe a table in here or somewhere, maybe in an issue 
where we can kind of just kind of track any sort of baseline, at least until we have this to normalize all our expectations and, and maybe in a format like this, kind of with the threshold and stuff um, or something like that. Um, yeah. Does that make sense to people? Like, what do you think? Uh, or like, how, what is, does anyone have any suggestions on that? Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll I'll create an issue or something. I'm, oh yeah. Go ahead. Somebody. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I for regarding the baseline. So the, 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 this is one of the idea to have also just you know just jobs you know in the Kubert CI. Um, and, you know, to have a baseline can be very, you know, can explode and, and have a lot of configurations. So the, the, the first idea was to have a minimal configuration and a very specific operation system and storage. And, you know, that we can, we, we show and we provide some information because you know, Kubert can run, every, you know, anywhere and it can be hard, you know, um, to define, you know, where, which system, which kind of system. So um, we, we need to define, you know, the, just uh, very well, I would say. Yeah, I'm trying I'm to do that so when, when we have like a, okay. yeah, a summary for yeah, that. I say, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say Marcel. I was gonna say, Marcelo, like it, we, I'm almost wondering if we could put this in like in plain text somewhere that we just kind of have like the CI just kind of um, mm -hmm. just absorb maybe or something like that. Because the, whatever this is could be usable by or should be usable by CI and then we can just, um, that'll be our source of truth. That's, mm -hmm. that's, I'm kind of leading toward that right now. Yeah, okay. So at least we can find a place for that um, somewhere in the, in the repo where we'll just kind of, We'll just track the stuff in plain text and uh, we got a little how our, our jobs will eventually consume it. And, and yeah, we, and you can put your uh, your stuff in there when I find it, I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Um, next, uh, reducing update patch collisions. Let's take a look at this. Oh yeah, that was mine. This is more of, I'm just, pointing out something that I saw uh, that probably impacts our startup times and other stuff. I don't have evidence that this um, reduces startup times yet, but I don't see how it couldn't. Uh, I just don't know how measurable it is. So when our VMIs are starting up, uh, we hit lots of these 409s, uh, at least two to four before a VMI gets to running. And a 4.9 is when we try to post an update to a VMI, but it gets rejected because our uh, VMI that we have in our informer uh, is different from reality. So it hasn't, our informer hasn't caught up to, to what is actually persisted at CD. Um, mm -hmm. So this causes things to get rate limited and it causes us to generate load on the um, API server that doesn't need to occur. Turns out the reason this was happening uh, was because we have lots of other informers that aren't our VMI informer. They are queuing keys onto uh, our VMI um, reconcile loop. So for example, a pod informer, if we create a pod and then update our VMI, we'll probably get notified that the pod was created before the VMI was updated. So yeah. then we queue because the pod was created and then we tried to patch our VMI that was out of date because we didn't get that update. Anyway, the point is there's a way to resolve this using an ex a really simple like heuristic using an expectation that says every time we update the VMI, don't process that key again until we actually see an update has occurred in our informer. And that pretty much made all of these collisions go away. So it reduces our, um, the number of reconcile loops it takes to actually start a VMI and the number of API calls that we make to start a VMI, which hopefully at scale could make like some pretty big gains for us. But I don't, again, have evidence for that yet. Mm, OK, this is cool. This sounds like a lot of what um, Ben had talked about with, uh, with the reconcile. Interesting. That is really interesting. So. So two to four or four or nine errors results in uh, 
two to four more reconciles for every VMI on startup. Yeah. So that means and we're- since it's an error, I yeah. think there is a backoff right included. Right, so exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we might be reducing the number of reconciles by like over half uh, for every VMI. Awesome, that's cool. I'm gonna, I, I really wanna try this like with some of the other measurements we've done. I wonder if this might be the, uh, the thing we've been looking for that's causing some of the collisions. Okay, this is really cool. Um, we'll take a look. It might not be the thing that's causing you all to, to have this spike as, uh, as more VMIs are introduced and like the, the um, queue gets larger and larger. It's probably one of the things at least. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the fair hedge. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I, it, it, it sounds like it will help for sure. Um, we, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how much. Um, this is definitely one I want to see like, um, with some of the other graphs we generated, I want to see if like how this moves the line. Um, cool. Okay. Great. Um, the thanks, David. Um, so the uh, that was the last bullet point for today. Um, does anyone else want to tweet? Anyone else want to bring up anything else? Uh, I guess, so we have what, 20 more minutes or 15 more minutes? Yeah. Maybe just for the sake of discussion, um, so forgetting the density tests and CI and all that, what would a load, um, sorry, what would a reporting tool look like? What would we want to see in that? Would it depend on Prometheus? How would it work? Uh, maybe we could, I don't know, make an exercise out of that. Does anyone have any thoughts? Um. I like the Cooper, you know, that you sent. It was... Well, that, that's a generation tool, though. That's a density. That that'd be like something actually. Gen I know that it does um, some metrics returning a, or a collection as well, but I wouldn't consider that the tool that we use to gather metrics necessarily because it's generating the load as well. Okay. Yeah. So well. Moving to the part actually, Kubevert is collecting, no, Kubevert is collecting. I like the way that they are doing in a way that, well, basically, if you, you want a tool to watch, you know, um, the Prometheus metrics and dump it in a report, you know, just, just, just to be easier to parse and, and, and see that comparison there, isn't it? Is that, is that, is that the idea? I, I guess, yeah. It, uh, yeah, so something like, so we could, um, something we could consume in like CI, like I could go through, you know, my PR and CI and say, okay, here's my, here's my report. Um, or my failure or whatever, like, you know, I can see like my thresholds were a little bit off. Um, I had, you know, maybe like I won the, on my 99th percentile, I was, I was at 120 seconds because maybe I had like one or two VMs that were just slow for some reason. Um, mm -hmm. So something that's consumable by CI. So let's just write things. So um, by CI uh, and the developer, it's potentially um, so, something that could run for every test case, even. I, I don't know if we'd take yeah. it that far, but it could be a precondition for every test and the postcondition would be dump the report for that test. Mm. Okay. So like every VM we create as part of the test case, would you say, would be we get a report from? You get a high level report of like how long it took VMIs during that test case to start and reach running or whatever we want to capture. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be treated differently per test. It would just be kind of a generic. This is the report of things that happened during this time frame. Okay. Um, I, I like the idea of having some thresholds like like we that you talked about earlier. 
So 50, 90, 99. So that's the way we can report. Um, and, and the metrics, and it's so I think we discussed that in the beginning, my PR was doing that to remove that part that I call resource collector. It's like a show the CPU usage, you know, per VM, the CPU usage for the, all the, the control plane modules, memory, and plus the latencies that we were discussing. Um, and, and also show this kind of thing, you know, uh, the offer latency also, again, the, the quantiles and for CPU, you know, in memory, just average, I think. I, I don't know if average makes sense, you know, just because sometimes, you know, it's things can explode and we, we don't know. Yeah. yeah, there's some, well, for example, like if we're, if we, if, the, if our new PR causes a ton of load on the API server, we'd want to know that one. So like, so these are, this is just VMIs. Um, if we're, we need to know um, the counter plane, the yeah, latency. So. Would, so latency is another one. Um, so we do thresholds again. So we'll do um, VMI load thresholds. Let's do the same thing. API latency thresholds. Um, and resource usage also. It's, yeah, sometimes, you know, not normally it's it's uh, related, but sometimes the CPU usage can increase, but the latency can still be fine, but it can become a problem later, you know. I mean, the resource usage, or especially because the control plane start to be like too heavy, it starts to be a problem. Yeah. But we, we, we yeah, we also. That. Yeah, we also want to think too, like, so what, what other, what other personas? So like we, um, so we have consumer by CI and developer. Let's talk about like tests, um, where you'd want to get reports. Um, like what kind of tests, so like, like, so like one is going to be, so like when we're doing massive scale, um, we want to get reports. We also want to get it, um, when, so like, well, the reason I'm thinking about that is because let's say at massive scale, suddenly vert handler is, is having, um, an increase or something in, in usage of CPU usage or something. We want to know that, like we want it, since it's going to be reported, this is one of the things we want to, this is one of the tests we want to run. So like if we do just, just a general performance test, um, what we do in CI, um, we do with our unit tests or our, our funk tests. Mm -hmm. so these are the areas we'd want it. So like what else like would we want if we're running it from these, if we're doing these types of tests, what other information would we want to get from our reporting tool? Well, maybe the report tool should like show the system configuration, you know, because if someone, for example, you know, if we have different companies using this tool, and as you mentioned, like creating maybe different baselines, um, it would be nice also to show some report about the, the system, you know, how many, you know, the, the Kubernetes uh, configuration information, cluster info, dump some, some more information about the system where it was running. Well, you know, yes. Will we get, I mean, I I was thinking maybe that the develop, the person running it would could provide that, but like, would we right. even get like, would we be able like outside of the test, and would we even get that? Like, um, like how, like that that sounds like it would be like we would need to sort of scan the system with with the tool or anything. Yeah, like yeah, that. right. Yeah, I think it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um. What, so I, <clears throat> we, we talked about thresholds, like did, does this cover um, our, you know, like uh, the, all the information we want about a VMI? Um, this gets us like, yeah, this gets us our like, you know, how fast we are, um, how slow we are. Um, 
if you those those metrics so we we need to have some you know high level metrics isn't it so where kind of we define our you know slo service level agreement something like that you know as kubernetes has i start to prepare a document about that i don't remember now <laughs> what i put in this document i don't know if i share i think i shared that in some time ago uh, and because like the vmi thresholds it's like this kind of high level metrics in it the api latency it's i would say like it's like low level it's not the user is not seeing that i'm saying we should you know keep like some some things like what impacts the user and something that it's, what's the metrics that it's internally that we you know should care about Okay. Um, another question, like how, how should this be run? Like, do we run the reporting tool after um, we, we execute a test? Do we run it before, do we run it during? I, I consider it, my thought has always been that it's like, a, it's kind of like a profiler. Like if you wanted to profile a CPU, uh, I mean, if you wanted to profile a process, um, you would start a profiler, which would begin sampling the process, and then you would stop. Maybe you'd run a load test during that or whatever you're going to do, then you'd stop the profiler and examine the results. So for our reporting tool, I would imagine starting the profiler or our uh, report gathering tool, uh, running the test, uh, then stopping the profiler and examining the results. It would only capture what occurred during that time period that it was actually running. What about, um, what if you were to run the report to afterwards and just gave it a time frame and it just scraped the metrics? Like, does it, or can, we, work if everything, can we not get the information? That maybe. That would only work if we we're uh, solely using Prometheus. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so if there's anything we wanna do that's different, uh, introspection of the system, then it wouldn't work. Right now, it's everything primitives, so, but we can't, we can yeah. see. That, that's a good question in terms of like the identity of the tool. If, if, if it's something that is. For um, metrics, I would say that the work queue metrics also might be, you know, interesting. So let's say we run it at the start. Um, uh, how is it? So we have, this gives us options, I guess, is the, is the point. Like this gives us options to either scrape from Prometheus or um, presumably do some sort of watching and gathering the same data. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if it matters too much where the metrics are coming from. I mean, as we have just different sources and they can also be combined probably in the report. Right? I would say that if we can run later, it's better because it doesn't introduce load in the system. In it can interfere in all the tests. But of course, if we think that there is something that it cannot be collected by Prometheus later, then we, we can change the approach, of course. But right now it's everything from Prometheus, isn't it? Yeah. That's something to think about. Um, yeah, because it, it kind of defines the identity of, of the reporting tool. It kind of when, <clears throat> I, I'm trying to think of like, so use cases like, um, you know, what would be like an example of something that we'd want to get during, um, during when a test is being run? Like, I guess, would there be, um, like let's assume all of this is already in Prometheus. Maybe, I mean, we, we, this is kind of what our plan is, right? We're gonna put these in Prometheus. We already have some of these in there. If they're all there, I guess the idea is like we are giving ourselves the, the, the opportunity to add things that could be um, Yeah, this is a good test. point. It might not be necessary. Uh, if we're going to completely depend on Prometheus for our reporting, then, um, 
seems like we could run it afterwards with the time period, this tool. I can't think of anything right now that doesn't exist in Prometheus. I think there are some, we, I can, I also think we can get pretty far with it. I'm not sure for some things like sometimes, especially right now, we have a watching approach also for some Prometheus metrics. And some things may be hard to get with that because some objects just disappear and you may not be able to watch them fast enough to, to collect something. And then it may be too difficult to distribute the metrics collection to the various components. But yeah. So are you talking about the granularity of the reporting? Yeah, here? I mean, like virtual control is right now collecting, for instance, all the phase transitions. But right. if you want to, for instance, collect uh, the time it takes to delete VMs, it could be impractical with that approach because with controller is not necessarily the one who deletes the VM. And we may not get the, the timestamp exactly which we want because with controller may not be able to observe it. Oh, it does. Uh, oh, wait, uh, you're right. Yeah. Well, it doesn't yeah. see the it disappears isn't it so actually i put the watcher in the in the pr yeah. for that yeah. yeah that's true yeah yeah so there are some corner cases we could rearrange stuff i think in qbert to also catch it but it may not be practical for our cases that's what i mostly mean yeah mm -hmm. yeah 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 i think the deletion is a good example yeah. So that would mean, um, to, if we had, if we didn't have, if we ran this porting tool after, would we still, can we still get the deletion time? Or is that what we're saying we can't because we're gonna miss the event? We'll, we'll still yes. get it. Actually, we're gonna get it with the Prometheus metric. We still get deletion uh, because it's a um, histogram and we're, we are updating it based on an informer locally. So the informer is still going to see that the deletion occurred, but that phase transition to a final state occurred, and it will get stored in that yeah, Instagram, get, which will eventually too, yeah. it'll eventually yeah. get reported to Prometheus. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure if we get the actual disappearance. That we may not get this one. It's just when it's marked to delete. Hmm? Yeah. Well, actually, there is the delete handler when it really disappears, and we process it, right, David? We have a, um, don't we have a finalizer? We have a finalizer. So, uh, we'll yeah. delete, so it was not going to be deleted officially until all the pods disappear. Yeah. Um, so virtual controller is in charge of that, right? With the finalizer. Sure. Right. Yeah. So we can get it. Yeah. And even if not, I mean, we get a real delete event inside virtual controller for every VM. If you, even if it would not be the case, we may not process this right now, but we should actually, so yeah. I think we have the opportunity to process yeah, yeah. it if we're not doing it. Yeah, I think the actual delete, when we get from the cache, this object does not exist anymore. I think we're not reporting that right now, but we could, yeah, we have the opportunity, as you said. Okay. Uh... Yeah, and then I, I know right now, not of a case where it would be the case, but it can be, I think. It's not impossible. So what do you say, uh, to answer this question, um, if we were to, uh, if we were to run, run late, um, I, 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 could, I could sort of position, I, I, or I could sort of envision this as like, if we were to run this late and then um, we have sort of the exact same idea as if we were to run it before, we're like we're just we're going to gather information from Prometheus um, through this period of time. Like that's our that's like our API. We want to gather we want to gather this information from this period of time, and then when we run it after, the idea is that we're just going to query Prometheus for the timestamps, and this would give us the opportunity if we wanted to later pivot to say. Okay, we're gonna run it for this period of time. We just we just kind of change it to be like, okay, we just change it to some sort of, you know, we have some sort of time that we run it. Um, so that so it wouldn't exclude us from doing this in the future. I think is so we could. I think maybe what we can start with is we do an after report 
And then we, we have the yeah, opportunity to pivot later. I would say you can yeah, after the one, you, you can, can generate, generate, you know, even generate the report later. You, of course, you, if the permit is still running and you have the timestamps, you can generate like the report from different runs later if you need. And in addition, um, that's what I kind of hinted in the PR comment I made. Uh, it's anytime possible to just tell Prometheus to append specific labels to all metrics starting from a specific time point. So it's also easy to just add really a label with a test ID or something during that period of the test time and then just remove it again and replace it with the next one for the next test. And then you don't, need, you don't even need timestamps on the reporting tool, for instance, just as an example. Okay. I think that gives us a path forward. I think that's like, we can start with that. I think this is easier too. Like we start after, <clears throat> we just assume Prometheus, we'll make that assumption. Um, and then uh, we just, we'll just put it behind some sort of API so that we can have the opportunity to do this. You know, if we decide we wanted to do during, um, we want to do like, yeah, if we want to come back and do something during. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right, we, we only got like one minute left. Um, I, I like what we have here. I think this is pretty good. Um, what other like line of last minute thoughts, like what else? Uh, we throw out here that we want in the reporting tool? I think my last thought here is when we start making this reporting tool, let's pick the one thing that we care about the most and just focus on that initially. So I think that was probably what, phase transition times or am I wrong there? Yeah, um, it's a good question. <laughs> I, I, I think, yeah, this is probably the I guess we could say we could start with this one. I, I think these are both very important. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the this one. Let me give it a little highlight. It'd be like we can cover that the first. That's. I think that's it's just a reasonable starting point. We have all the data around it already, so. So a really simple tool that all it does is over a time period give us the VMI thresholds that occurred during that, um, and then let us build out from there. So just make sure that we, yep. we have a really solid uh, agreed upon entry point for what this tool can start with because that makes it actionable. I think it's actionable now, actually, through this discussion. We could go off and somebody could write this right now. Okay. That's so we'll, we'll leave it right that then. Okay. All right, we're at time. So uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, this was pretty good. We got, we got a lot done with this. All right. Uh, have a good day, everybody. Thank you very much. And um, we'll see you online. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.